Okay, lecture two. So we'll talk about a lot of things in the lecture two. First of all, uh, I want you to uh, take a look at this diagram, which shows you uh, the drug substance manufacturing process. So so-called upstream downstream processes, um, as well as uh, some, I guess, formulation field finish step is described in this diagram. So, so-called upstream processing means what? It's a continuous cell culture process where uh, your genetically modified cells are making your API. And then from the large-scale cell culture, you will try to capture your API. Uh, that is through, first, the clarification or harvest step where you will remove the cells often because cells already uh, produced your protein and it's protein is already secreted from the cell and then you will capture your api from your medium okay so you use something like depth filtration to remove chunky cell debris and then you can do a tangential flow filtration which will allow you to remove uh, the cell culture medium and then you will capture API in a different uh, buffer and then you can also use centrifugation uh, to remove uh, cell uh, pellets and things like that after that the downstream process will start and downstream process is what it's a uh, multiple steps where you will uh, try to purify your API from other unwanted contaminants Okay, so there may be some other cellular proteins and other cell debris that came with your API. So you try to remove those uh, by running through different chromatography column methods or filtration of different kinds. So the main point here is to see uh, how many places in this uh, diagram the filtration is described. Okay, so when you say filtration you know what that process is right it's a size space separation of course you can easily see depth filtration is kind of filtration there's another tangential flow filtration that's involved and then what else is there if you look at here upstream process there's a liquid pre-filter there's a sterilizing grade liquid filter and sterilizing grade air filter air pre-filter and then if you look at the downstream process, sterilize, sterilize, sterilization or sterilizing grade liquid filtration, buffer filter, you know, buffer filter, buffer filter, and then, you know, you will have another TFF. So the, the main message here is there are so many steps during your drug substance manufacturing where filtration will be involved, okay? So that signifies the importance of filtration. So we'll talk about you know, different types of bioseparation method, meaning uh, methods that will allow you to separate out your biological molecule, such as API. And first method will be the filtration. Okay, so filtration is a separation technique that will allow you to uh, remove or capture uh, the molecules based on their sizes. Okay, so if you look at this diagram, just as your coffee filter you use in the morning or whenever you try to make a coffee, you know, so if there's a filter and things that are smaller than the pores on the filter will go through, but the, the things, the molecules that are larger will be trapped, captured by the filter. So it's size-based separation. So you can call those things that are going through, through the filter as filtrate or permeate. Okay, they'll be filtered through or they are permeating through the filter okay and the ones that are captured or retained by the filter are called retentate okay so the initial material will be separated into filtrate or permeate and retentate okay understand those terminology and then depends on the size of the pores found on the filter they may be called macro filter micro filter ultra filter and maybe nano filters. Okay, you can look at your textbook uh, figure 31.2 on page 592 for more, more detailed classification of filters. And then some important terms in your filtration operation. Again, feed is the starting material. Okay, and the feed pressure, of course, 
the feeding of the material over the filter requires some pressure so there will be a continuous flow so the pressure may be written in different units maybe bar per psi you know so you understand how much uh, pressure is applied and fouling means the building up of the retentate on the filter surface so if fouling continues your filter will be clogged up so you will not be able to use uh, the filter anymore so you have to replace out your filter and what's causing fouling is foulant of course the retentates and how how fast your um, material is running through filter through your filter is expressed as volumetric flux rate Okay, it's the rate of the volume flow across a unit area, maybe a volume per uh, time per area. And then flow rate, speed of the flow over your filter, of course. Okay, So the rate of filtration is expressed as flow rate, normally given in uh, volume per unit time. And then concentrate or retentate of course the things that are captured okay so the feed solution remaining above the membrane during or after concentration so concentration is a type of operation where you remove the solvent only and still uh, capture the molecule that are dissolved so you can uh, selectively remove the solvent only if your you know molecule is dissolved in a large volume of buffer in a very low concentration you can remove uh, the solvent only so you can bring up the concentration okay and then kilodalton is a unit of you know proteins or mass okay okay again this diagram showed you um, different uh, filter types or filtration operation based on what filter you are using as well as the size of these different contaminants that will be removed by a different filter nano filtration micro filtration reverse osmosis may use nano or ultra filter okay conventional filter maybe macro filter type Okay, and then the so-called the, the major contaminants like pollens from uh, plants, coal dust in the air, yeast cells. Those are fungi, unicellular fungi, that are large, about 10 micrometer size, and prokaryotic bacterial cells, uh, smaller than of course eukaryotic cells, but um, there are. Uh, normally larger than 0.2 micron. About they are about 0.5 micron size. So human cell, red blood cells, about 10 micron size. Okay, and then viruses are small. So microfilters normally have 0.1 or 0.2 micron pore size. Uh, so they are efficient in re removing bacterial cells, yeast cells, plant cells, and animal cells, and all those living cells, except for viruses or endotoxins okay that are smaller than 0 0.1 0 0.2 microns okay so if you want to remove pyrogens or viruses you have to use something like nanofilters that have smaller pores than these uh, contaminant sizes okay so again based on the pore size of your filter macro filters they have about 10 micron or larger pore sizes they can remove large things like fibers sand okay things like that depth filters can remove uh, chunky cell aggregates okay and then micro filters have the pores uh, size between 0.1 to 10 microns normally uh, it's about 0.2 micron is the universal pore size of micro filters they are very efficient in removing living cells including bacterial cells okay uh, so very often used to remove contaminating bacterial cell fungi and yeast uh, so it is used as a sterile filtration so that's microfiltration okay so 0.22 micron pore size can remove E. coli cells 0.65 micron can remove fungi and yeast 0.45 to 8 micron 0.8 micron can remove general particles 1 to 2.5 micron can remove coarse particles okay there's something called microplasma we'll talk about what microplasma are those are by bacterial cell without cell wall because they don't have any cell wall their size is much smaller so by microplasma can go through your microfilters 
And then HIPAA filter, you probably heard about HIPAA filters. HIPAA filters are what? High efficiency particulate air filters. Okay. They have about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 micron uh, pore size. So they are very efficient in removing uh, bio burden contaminants floating in the air. Okay. Again, uh, size cut up on what's uh, removed from your filters, microfilters, most of living cells, except for microplasma and viruses and endotoxins. Viral filtration, maybe a nanofilter or ultra filter, can remove viruses. Protein molecules can be sorted out based on their sizes. Okay, ultra filtration. Okay. And then I told you microplasma are unique bacterial cells. Okay. Uh, they are bacterial cells without cell wall. So if you have a microfilter with a pore size of 0.3 or 0.2 micron, actually microplasma can uh, run right through that microfilter because they are much smaller. So micropla microplasma are about 0.1 to 0.3 micron micrometer size. And uh, normally viruses are about 0.05 to 0.1 micrometer micron size. And the bacterial cells with intact cell wall, they are about 1 to 10 micrometer. Yeast cells are about uh, 3 to 10 micrometer. Those are unicellular fungi. Eukaryotic cells are about 10 to 100 micrometer size. Okay, So understand the efficiency of uh, microfilters that can remove most of the living cells except for microplasma and viruses. Okay, So then <clears throat> microplasma could present you a problem if you're going to use microfiltration as your sterilization method because microplasma can run right through it. Okay, Like I said, they are a unique set of prokaryotic cells that do not have cell wall. Uh, <clears throat> because of lack of their cell wall, their uh, shape it's very flexible. They are kind of a you know have flexible shape, um, and um, so they are found in many different places as parasites. They live in mam mammalian cells, including human, um, you know, reptiles, insects, and plants. Okay, um, some of them are known as. Uh, uh, pathogens, but these are well known microplasma species. Okay, among those, uh, like pneumonia causing microplasma, okay, is an infectious pathogen, and there are other types of infectious pathogen involved in uh, creating some sexual transmitted disease. Okay, so microplasma are resistant to antibiotics that target cell wall synthesis. Uh, something like penicillin. What that means is some of the antibiotics kill bacterial cells by blocking the cell wall synthesis. Okay, so if you want to use uh, those antibiotics to kill microplasma, no, microplasma would not be affected by them because microplasma doesn't even have cell wall, so they don't care about making cell wall. That's what it means. Okay, so you have to use different uh, anti antibiotics that can uh, kill. Um, bacterial cells, like maybe blocking the um, protein synthesis, like translation and things like that. So microplasma could contaminate your cell culture ba uh, batch. Okay, it depends on how uh, aseptic your operation is. If you have that, you know, contamination, you will have a problem because you, know, you cannot remove them through microfiltration. And microplasma uh, contamination is hard to detect. Okay. So what happens uh, uh, to the cell culture if it is uh, infected by microplasma? Okay, so 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 cells do not uh, become healthy, so they get sick, so they cannot make their own proteins or so RNA, DNA molecules, so they they become very sick. That's what it is. Okay, so their growth uh, pattern will be changed a lot and they will grow very slowly. So there you'll see some you know notifiable uh, changes in your cell culture growing condition if you have microplasma contamination in your batch. Okay.